Good afternoon. Welcome to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. I'm Council Member Adrian Adams, the Chair of this Subcommittee. We're joined today by Council Member Peter Koo. Today we will hear LU-467 and LU-468, two applications submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development related to the 784 Cortland Avenue project and Chair Salamanca's district in the Bronx. LU-467 is an application submitted pursuant to Section 505 of Article 15 of the General Municipal Law of the State of New York and Section 197-C of the New York City Charter for the Fourth Amendment to the Melrose Commons Urban Renewal Plan for the Melrose Common Urban Renewal Area. The amendment would remove a 45-foot height restriction from URP Site 15 imposed by the current plan for certain buildings in the R7-2 and R7-A districts. LU-468 is an application submitted pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law for approval of an urban development action area designated for the property located at 359 East 157th Street and 784 Cortland Avenue, Block 2404, Lots 1 and 2, the approval of an urban, urban development action area project for such area and pursuant to 197-C of the New York City Charter for the disposition of such property to a developer selected by HPD. The related applications would exempt the development site from a height limit to facilitate the construction of a seven-story mixed-use building with affordable residential units, ground floor retail space, and community facility space. I will now introduce the panel. We have Genevieve Michael from HPD and Randall Powell from Infinite Horizons LLC. Before you begin, council will swear you in. Please raise your right hands and say your names. Uh, Genevieve Michael. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and answer to all sub, uh, council member questions? Yes. yes. Okay, you may begin. Great. Land use numbers 467 and 468 are related ULARP actions seeking UDAP designation, project and disposition approval for two city-owned sites, as well as an amendment to the Melrose Common Urban Renewal Plan in order to facilitate the development of a project known as 784 Cortland Avenue, located at Block 2404, Lots 1 and 2 in Bronx Council District 17. Land use number 467 is related to the fourth amended Melrose Common Urban Renewal Plan. The disposition area is a designated urban renewal site of the Melrose Common Urban Renewal Area. The amendment to the plan will exempt Site 15, Block 2404, Lots 1 and 2, from the height restriction of 45 feet within R72 or R7A zoning districts. This will facilitate development as per zoning of a residential building of seven stories with commercial and community facility space. Land use number 468 will facilitate the development as per zoning of a seven-story residential building with commercial and community facility space under HPD's Neighborhood Construction Program, or NCP. Under the program's guidelines, sponsors purchase city-owned or privately-owned property in order to construct multifamily buildings, creating up to 45 units of affordable rental housing on infill sites. The newly constructed buildings provide housing to low-income, moderate-income, and middle-income families, as well as a portion set aside for formerly homeless families and individuals. The city will sell the disposition area to a designated sponsor for the nominal price of $1 per tax lot. The sponsor will also deliver an enforcement note and mortgage for the remainder of the appraised value. On uh, November 24, 2015, HPD issued a request for proposals geared towards certified MWBE organizations that would be given the opportunity to submit a proposal to develop the lots as low-income rental housing. On uh, January 12, 2017, Infinite Horizons LLC was selected as the sponsor, and under NCP guidelines, the sponsor proposes to build one building containing approximately 20 dwelling units. There will be a mixture of unit types, including one including four one-bedrooms, 11 two-bedrooms, and five three-bedroom apartments. Rents will be affordable to families with incomes between 30% and 80% of area median income. Formerly homeless tenants, referred by DHS and other city agencies, will pay up to 30% of their income as 
as rent. All units will be subject to rent stabilization. The sponsor also proposes to construct approximately 2,278 gross square feet of commercial space and approximately 6,265 gross square feet of community facility space on the disposition area for which the uses have yet to be decided. In order to enable construction of the project, HPD is before the subcommittee seeking approval uh, for both pre-considered land use items. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Randall Powell. I'm one of the members of Infinite Horizons and the development team. I will uh, briefly go through the uh, PowerPoint presentation that you guys have to talk about the project. Um, again, as uh, stated earlier, the project is in the Melrose Common Area section of the Bronx. Um, it consists of two lots. Uh, the development team will consist of Infinite Horizons as the MBE uh, uh, co-developer along with MBD Community Housing Corporation, a long-standing nonprofit in the Bronx, FGPH Corp uh, as co-development partner as well as the general contractor. OCV Architects, a long-standing uh, design firm, has been selected as the um, architectural and design company that uh, did the design on the project. Um, if you move to page uh, number five, the site conditions um, include blocks uh, 2404, lots one and two, currently owned by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development. Um, these have been infill sites uh, located in the Melrose section of the Bronx and been vacant and underutilized for several years. Uh, one of the missions of the development team is to actually take underutilized sites and turn them into affordable housing. Um, currently, the sites have uh, overgrown grass and some uh, minor dumping. If you look at uh, slide deck page number six, um, it gives you some uh, various photos of the uh, location uh, on, uh, on the corner of uh, 784 Cortland Avenue and 359 East 157th Street. Again, the building program uh, will be a seven-story masonry building with 20 units with an elevator consisting of 22,170 square feet, commercial, uh, commercial space as well as retail space, and uh, some minor ancillary space in the uh, cellar and the, uh, the first floor for a total building square footage of 34,167 square feet respectively. Um, as you move through the slide deck, you'll see on slide deck number eight, you have a west elevation of the building that gives the um, location of uh, the entrances on the first floor and as the uh, building goes up, um, seven stories above. On the next uh, slide deck on uh, page number nine, you actually have the south elevation. It also shows various entrances into the building as well as the, um, the bulkhead and the roof, um, just to give uh, a design outline of the project. Uh, moving on to slide deck number 10, you actually have the cellar space. Um, we highlighted that there will be a bike storage. Um, we're trying to encompass a lot of the new features that a lot of the uh, new buildings are um, adapting to, which includes bike storage as well as commercial uh, space for uh, commercial cellar space, the storage space, and the retail, and as well as uh, cellars, uh, cellar storage space in the community facility, along with all the other utility rooms. Moving on to slide deck number 11, you will see that the uh, commercial space is highlighted in the, uh, the off pink color and the community facility space is highlighted in the dark orange brown color. Um, the entrance for the residential space will be on Cortland Avenue. Um, that's uh, the staircase highlighted in the blue in the far right corner and the canopy uh, that shows the entrance to the first floor ground space for the retail space. On East 157th Street, you will see that the entrance for the uh, first floor ground of the community facility space is highlighted. That's where that access to the um, that space will actually um, be located. As we move along to uh, deck number 12, uh, you look at the second floor of the community facility space, which takes up uh, quite a, a large portion of that uh, second floor space, along with another apartment. Um, there's also an elevator that will be accessible um, to the community facility space um, for additional uses, just to make it a more uh, uh, pleasing um, space. As you move on to the third floor plan, um, you have the units, um, that's where some of the units start. You have the two bedrooms on that, and then we also have a community room which is highlighted in green that will be open to the community as well as a laundry room um, that's highlighted in the, the light blue color. Um, and those spaces will be accessible to the residents of the building. And if you look uh, towards the laundry room and the uh, recreation space, there's actually will be an offset um, terrace 
that will be used by the residents of the um, the building as well. We we felt like these design features just make it more appealing and a better product for the residents living in the building. Slide deck number 14 is the typical floors of four through seven, which have, again, as I mentioned earlier, um, one, two, and three bedroom apartments located throughout, again, an elevator building um, with staircases. And then uh, slide deck number 15, um, we are also including uh, the use of solar panels um, as part of a green design element. Um, we believe that the location of the building really is suitable for um, incorporating some nice uh, photovelic um, solar panels on the site. Um, again, not to reiterate too many of the points already covered, um, the AMIs are going to be 30 to 80 percent of AMI. Um, moving over to slide deck number 17, again mentioned there, 20% of the building will consist of four bedrooms, 55% uh, of the building will consist of uh, two bedrooms, and 25% of the building will consist of uh, three bedrooms. And we believe that a family-owned or family-designed building represents a good mix in this particular area. Um, we know that the councilman is looking to have a lot of families um, in, and keep families in the community, so this is kind of what uh, made our judgment towards creating this family-style building versus a larger um, institutional-style building. Uh, we want to. We believe that this is a, make a very good home for the residents because it's a little bit more intimate, and the tenants can actually um, meet each other and, and learn to work and live together. Um, and now we move on to slide deck number 18, which is actually the AMI unit distribution. As mentioned earlier, um, you have uh, three homeless units, uh, five units at 30% of AMI, two units at 40% of AMI, three units at 70% of AMI, and then seven units at 80% of AMI. And um, again, we believe that this actually incorporates the councilman's um, wishes in terms of the, uh, the dynamic of AMIs as well as what we feel is appropriate for the, uh, the neighborhood and the demographic makeup. Um, again, through the support of HPD and the local council, we would like to um, apply for a low-income housing tax credit application um, for this fall. We've been working closely with the support of HPD um, to start looking at underwriting and developing a budget. If everything goes well, we would like to break ground um, between the end of this year and early next year, um, depending on how everything is structured and financed. And as we close out on the ULIP action, um, again, we've already um, started ramping up the design plans. All the environmental work has been done. And on the last page, deck number 20 gives a, a rough timeline of kind of where we stand at with the project. And uh, we look forward to having any um, questions or comments regarding the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, the, it looks lovely, actually. Um, how does the uh, community feel about this addition? It was well received. We spoke to the community board. We got a community board approval. We also spoke to the Bronzeboro President's Office. Um, they also gave their blessings and the approval of the project. So now we're looking for the same support from the council member and the, uh, the committee itself. Do you know of any specific concerns that the council member has at this time? I think the you know only concern that I have heard is we are still uh, hashing out the details of the AMI mix. I think he has you know uh, certainly pushed for us to figure out if we can get those any deeper. Uh, it certainly is going to create some financing financing challenges for us, but we are in active conversations with him around that. Okay, that's what I would have thought, but I'm I'm glad you said so. I didn't want to just <laughs> blurt that out. Well, um, I thank you very much uh, for your testimony here today, both of you. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly uh, thrilled at the fact that we are doing this um, through um, MBE, um, always impressed by Infinite Horizons. So I think that we have an excellent uh, partner uh, with the organization. So I thank them very much always for their, um, their hard work uh, in our communities, particularly communities of color. So really, really happy about that. And I thank you very much for your testimony today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Are there any members of the public that wish to testify on this matter today? Seeing none, 
The public hearings on LUs 467 and 468 are now closed and the items are laid over. That concludes today's business. I thank council, I thank my staff, members of the, members of the public, my colleagues uh, for today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.